ಅಹಂಕಾರಂ ಬಿಂದು ಸಂಯುಕ್ತ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಧ್ಯಾಯಂತಿ ಯೋಗಿನ ಕಾಮದ ಮೋಕ್ಷದ ಚೈವಾರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ It feels so wonderful to be here, so many people for this really wonderful process. This is the first time I'm coming here and uh, needless to say it's a mind-blowing experience. I just feel so blessed to be here. Looking forward to the experience. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I've been dreaming of coming here and taking, participating in some process of this kind. consecration is a life process if you transform mud into food we call this agriculture if you make food into flesh and bone we call this digestion integration if you make flesh into mud we call this cremation or if you can make this flesh or even a stone or even an empty space into a divine possibility that is called consecration it's my dream some day the world should the humanity should live in consecrated spaces your home should be consecrated your street should be cons- consecrated your office should be consecrated wherever you spend time those spaces must be consecrated for those people who don't get the point easily we want to drown them drown them not in water drown them into a certain energy field so that even the hardest nuts will crack somewhere have you been into the tirthakund hall of you hmm? no all of you have been poningla ella tirthakund kula poirkingla ಬಂದುಟಿಂಗೆ ಬಲಿಯ ಸೊ ಯು ಮಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಅ ಟ್ರಮೆಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಬ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಜುವಿನೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಅಬವ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರಮೆಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸೆಪ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ರೆಸೆಪ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ವೆಲ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗ್ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲಿ ಟು ಓಪನ್ ಅಪ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ರೆಸೆಪ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ and stabilize physical imbalances in a person when i say physical imbalances i'm talking about chronic imbalances which cause physical disturbance physical and mental disturbance i'm saying physical because prana is considered physical or prana is physical not considered physical so it can cons- it straightens out the energy or the pranic imbalances in a person and which will lead to a lot of physical and mental well-being but the main focus is to create spiritual receptivity there's a tremendous amount of energy there and uh, when the body is wet it is always much more receptive than when the body is dry this is the whole tradition of always having a shower and going with wet hair and you know in india this is always there when you want to enter the temple first thing is you have a bath outside and go with wet clothes because a wet body always is much more receptive to these energies than a dry one i just went into it once and almost 3 days i couldn't close my eyes it was like i was just wide awake like that so it is basically used as a mechanism or a tool as a preparatory tool to enter the analinga but by itself it's very powerful
we will be consecrating the new Tirthakund and opening the Dhyanalinga complex. It involves a lot of stone work and everybody is working twenty-four hours to make this happen. This is an event that you should not miss. It's a… it's a one-time event, it'll never happen again. The new Tirthakund is large and three mercury solidified mercury lingas are being consecrated on that day. You should mark the date in its winter solstice. The many things one can do when the shifting happens. You heard of Bhishma wanting to die in the Uttarayana, you heard of this? He remained in the bed of arrows for, ma uh, for three months or so, so that he can die in Uttarayana because there is a significant shift in the human system between southern hemisphere and the sun's run shifting from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere. Right now we are in Dakshinayana, in December twenty-first or twenty-second it will shift to Uttarayana. On that day this will happen, there will be various kinds of uh, sadhanas and meditations and a whole lot of processes.